It started here, in the guest bedroom. Gruesome stains mark the spot on the mattress where a woman was beaten over the head before being grabbed by her ankles and dragged to the ground. From there, a trail of gore leads through the hallway, around a scattered pile of books, and into the den. It's here where the trail ends, terminating in a dark red pool beneath Rui Ann Park's broken skull. It took at least 10 blows to end the 75-year-old's life and to begin one of the most twisted murder mysteries the state of Arkansas has ever seen. This is a story that has more tragedy to it than just the murder of Mrs. Park. It's got numerous victims and numerous perpetrators. Their home on Logtown Hill was called the showplace of Van Buren, Arkansas, a name befitting of the people who lived within. The Park family was a really prominent family in town. Hugh Park and his wife, Rui Ann, they both owned the Press Argus newspaper, which in those days, we got our news from the newspaper. So owning a newspaper in and of itself was a big deal. And being a big deal was apparently important to the family's matriarch, Rui Ann. She was president of the Garden Club, president of the Library Fund. She wanted to be involved in everything. She thought she was a real upper crust lady. But Anita Paddock grew up with the Parks and is revealing new details to Crime Watch Daily from her book, Blind Rage, including that being well-connected didn't necessarily make Rui Ann well-liked. I wouldn't say she had any enemies, but she just did not have a nice personality. There was one person who always brought out the best in Rui Ann, and that was her only child, Sam Hugh. Sam was the apple of uh, his parents' eye, and they really put him on a pedestal. He's very bright and uh, had lots of talents. Then, when Sam Hugh was around five, the Parks decided to adopt a second child, a seven-year-old girl named Linda. When she first got Linda, oh, she dressed her up and these cute little dresses and big bows in her hair. And it was like, look at me, I'm the most magnanimous woman. I've gotten this little girl out of the orphanage. But people saw through that. The reality was, soon after Rui Ann took Linda in, she regretted it. She was very, very shy. She wasn't nearly as smart as Sam. Linda consequently didn't get this, the same attention uh, from her parents, specifically her mom. And her mom and her, I understand, had a uh, rather rough relationship. Hugh and Rui Ann later divorced, and after high school, both Sam and Linda enrolled at the University of Arkansas, embarking on two very different life paths. Linda got married and settled into a quiet life of obscurity about three hours away in Cabot, Arkansas, while Sam Hugh graduated law school, returned to Van Buren, and found success as the youngest ever U.S. prosecuting attorney of the 5th District of Arkansas. But in a town where some people's social views were as old as the Civil War battles once fought here, Sam was both part of the in crowd and an outcast. He was gay at a time when it wasn't politically correct to be gay. And that was one of the things that caused a lot of people to dislike him. Including authorities. The police agencies in particular disliked him. Uh, they didn't like the, the, his lifestyle. He had young men that he would get out of jail maybe for vagrancy and he would bring them to his house and they would do odd jobs for him and he was drinking and there was lots of loud parties there. Unfortunately, Sam's partying started to become an everyday thing and he would eventually lose his job as a state prosecutor. At some point, he moved into one of his mother's three rental properties just a few hundred feet from the main house and opened up his own law practice. But clients weren't exactly banging down his door. 
Sam had a tremendous need for money at the time, and there were numerous statements from Sam's acquaintances saying that he was constantly trying to borrow money from his mother. There were even reports of heated public exchanges between the two, some occurring just a few weeks before the night that would change everything. May 16th, a Saturday. Sam was with us that evening. In fact, had had supper with us and was in good spirits. Then, just before seven, Sam told the couple he wanted to get home to catch a movie on TV. Later that night, Sam chit-chatted with his mother on the phone before drinking himself to sleep. And the next morning when Sam woke up, he had a hangover. He woke up and he saw his mother's newspaper still lying where she demanded it be thrown. And he thought, hmm, that's strange. And when the paper was still there hours later, he thought worse than that. There were three keys to the house. He had one, his mother had one, and Linda had one. And so he went and used his key, and then he walked into the, through the kitchen into the den, and there lay his mother's body, and she was dead. And hysterical Sam Hugh calls police, then his sister. Linda was home, and he told her that their mother was dead, and she just fell apart over that, and she was very, very upset. By the time Linda arrives at the house with her husband, Howard, several hours later, detectives have already poured over the scene. I understand there was no sign of break-in, and Mrs. Park was real careful to lock her house, and she was well known for that. There was no sign of burglary. There was no sexual violation. The police investigation basically revealed that someone had managed to get inside this woman's very substantial defenses and had beaten her around the head. It looked like a crime of anger uh, because of the number of blows. So who was angry enough to execute such a brutal crime? Immediately after discovering Rui Ann's body, some officers set their sights on one suspect and one suspect only, her own son, Sam Hugh. Coming up. They have this person who's in jail says, Sam told me he did it. Did Sam Hugh really murder his own mother in a vicious rage? They performed a lie detector test on Sam. 